It's a perfect season if you open seas in the video game. Spring! Based on Sony Animation's first attempt at an animated film, and to this day, Sony has given us a trilogy of Hotel Transylvania films, a cloudy of a chance of meatballs duology. Serves up. Uh, Smurfs. The Emoji Movie. Didn't they also make the Alpha and Omega film? Well, it turns out they didn't make the Alpha and Omega film, but just like Alpha and Omega, Open Season got a series of directed DVD sequels no one should ever spend money to see. Kate, let's make this moment last. I have to pee. I have to pee. <laughs> And when I first got rejected, and I, didn't, I forgot I had sex with Kathy Griffin, so I just threw that in. You had sex with Kathy Griffin? I kind of think so. <laughs> also, both Alpha and Omega and Open Season were produced by the same person. Fantastic. So, you want to see some Open Season fan art? Well, screw you, buddy. Daddy. We all gotta look at some fan art anyways. Starting with this beautiful butt-on-butt -butt action with Elliot and his doe friend. There are two of these, by the way. There are two of these next to Microsoft Paint painting of Elliot flaunting his junk. Fascinating. Now, using an unironic masterpiece right here with Boog and Elliot smiling for the camera. I like it. I also like this uh, stylized cartoon drawing of Boog and Elliot. If they ever made a flash or hand-drawn animated open season cartoon, it would definitely look like this. Then for some reason, through searching Google Images, I keep getting this drawing of the lioness from the Lion King in a moment costume because hi. <laughs> Gameplay-wise, this game plays like a rip-off of Sneak King, but with more gameplay mechanics than just sneaking up behind someone to give them your buns filled with meat or to scare the living daylights out of them. Both the same thing really, since both will probably kill you after a long day's life. For anyone really curious of this open season and sneak king connection, believe it or not, but both games also came out in 2006. Open season in September, and sneak king in November of course. Cause everyone buys from Burger King for a Thanksgiving meal. Nah, I'm just kidding. Everyone of course goes to KFC for the Thanksgiving meal. One more thing folks. It's the only way that you're going to get chicken that is finger good. You two coming? You go ahead, honey. I want to talk to these folks a little bit longer. I want to eat chicken burgers. You little prick. Hey, Jim, don't hurt my baby. Now sit down. You're an embarrassment to my family. Oh, yeah. Well, at least I don't touch Freddy. Hey, what? Don't let him touch my spaghetti. Yeah, he touches my little brother. He... He fingers him. Do you finger our boy? Don't you get wacky on me. What the f are we talking about here? Mr. Brody, so this is very serious. Based you on what I've heard news. here today, I am required by law to notify the authorities. <laughs> you hear that, Dad? You're gonna pay! He's a molester. He's a child molester! Ah! 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 As you've seen that obvious gameplay footage, Boo can use Elliot as a hacky sack to toss at logs and knock them down, toss at enemies to the shrine, and toss off cliffs only for him to eventually come back, prompting you to want to toss him off again. This is the most fun you'll have with this game, and I'm not joking, so live it up while you still can. Boo and his fat rump can't hop, skip, or jump. So for most of the game, you'll have to find or create paths for you to move on to the next level. Boog, however, can pick up allies other than Elliot to toss at enemies and use for creating paths. When tossed at an enemy, Elliot does a mating dance to catch the attention of nearby hunters, which in turn distracts them and allows you to sneak behind the enemy unseen. Squirrels can also be used to stun hunters and get rid of them at the same time, if you wait long enough. 
Spoils need to be tossed at nearby tree in order to get into position to toss his nuts into people's faces. Skunks can be used to both stun hunters and get them out of log cabins. Simply toss a skunk into the chimney of an occupied log cabin and wait for the show to start. You can also just casually toss a skunk at a hunter with that more in line strike your fancy. Bunnies can be picked up and used as a headshot sniper gun that insta kills a hunter at hand. Well, they don't die, of course, this is a kid's game. They just run away. Cause it's okay for a hunter to kill an animal, but it ain't politically correct for an animal to kill a hunter in this game. Great! Lastly, there's a beaver with a chainsaw you can toss at trees or down logs to create a path. Other than tossing his lunch, uh, I mean friends. Friends with unseen benefits, yes. Boog has the ability to sniffle crack cocaine. Boog here of course knows what the good stuff is and can sniff out hidden items required for a mission or hidden badges with this ability. Later down the road, Boog learns the one on all fours which allows him to get through the game faster and ram into enemies. He also eventually learns to swim above water. Yeah, you can't dive under water to perform water ballet. I thought for sure this game was heading in that direction. So going back to Boog's stealth mechanics and scaling hunters, you just gotta sneak behind them and press the roll button and press it again at the meter's highest peak to scare the hunter. Wait too long and Boog will cough instead of war. Because Boog just got a case of the sniffles and just wanted a tissue from the hunter. He's checking out the last seconds all I gotta say. If you don't sneak up on the hunter and just try to scale him, the hunter's meter will be higher and thus harder to scale since you will have to be very precise in order to get them out of here. Boog has a camouflage button that allows him to pose as a bushy version of the Statue of Liberty to lose the attention of hunters. Wouldn't be the first thing I think of when imagining a bushy Lady Liberty, but hey, this is a kid's game. Also, why the Statue of Liberty? Does open season take place in New York or something? I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure it might have taken place in Oregon. Or was it Los Angeles? Yeah, definitely Los Angeles. Elliot, by the way, joins in on disguise as well, and why the hell does the disguise grow out of them? Is Boog and Elliot secretly mutant animals? Someone better call Professor Xavier before Magneto touches them. Who knows what kind of evil can be done with this kind of power? Wow, I actually wrote a whole paragraph just talking about the stupid camouflage mechanic. Did I mention if a hunter spot you beforehand, the disguise won't work and just disintegrate upon activation? Well, I guess that was an important detail that I left out by mistake. Hunters come in a few different variations. Smelly ones who bathe in Shrek's toilet cannot be stunned by skunks. There are hunters who are a bit stronger and will take little more effort to scale them away. And there's the normal stew guys. He's stew. The stew things. He's a That's what he is. You can play as Elliot sometimes and he does things too. He does things too, guys. He runs on all fours, can jump, and taunts enemies into traps, since he is unable to attack anyone until the end. By the end of the game, he has a chainsaw that controls like garbage. He can use it to cut holes in defenses, cut down trees, and attack enemies. The catch is the chainsaw attacks whenever it feels like, so you have to wait until an animation occurs where Elliot charges forward to attack anything. There is no designated button for instant attacks with a chainsaw. Before I forget, Ellie can also use Mr. Happy Fun Time propane tanks to knock over trees and blow up enemies. Ellie is also secretly working with Isis. Besides the main set of gameplay between Ellie and Boog, there's a handful of minigame sections worth talking about. There are the speed missions in which case you are either rolling down a mountain in a snowball avoiding obstacles in your path, or doing the same but floating down the river on top of an outhouse. These missions control fine, but it keeps screwing up with the outhouse constantly hitting every walk in its path. That's not the game's fault though, I just suck at the game. Next we have the tilting minecart mini segments where Boog must tilt the cart to the left or right to collect badges and pick a path to travel while also occasionally having to jump when the whales ahead are broken apart. A very easy gameplay style to get the hang of, though the gameplay eventually speeds up quick and you might die pretty easily as a result. Results. 
I think it's good enough, you know it sounds like a W. So I guess pick the fourth one because the fourth one's probably the best take of that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not kidding. Just give it time though to show an L and you'll eventually get it. Or maybe not. Oh, and there's that one session at the Neo stop of the game where Boog is stuck in the back of a truck, only able to lean left or right to collect badges. No need to pick a path here, there's only the one set track to travel along. Lastly, Ellie has a handful of turret sections ranging from flipping cans to dropping logs with beavers to slingshotting porcupine ammunition with an old bag's bois. I wonder how Elliot managed to get that bois for this turret session. Grandma got by a reindeer. You can say there's no such thing as as for me and Grandpa, we the Apache Warborn deer antlers help a little as some sort of reference crosshair in the broad torch section. But with the other two torch sections, it's a bit harder to judge where you are shooting. Especially the silly pop flipping section. Other than that, these play like your average torch section which you must shoot all the enemies on screen. And be sure to knock them out before they slice off a bit of your health in the process. Music wise, this game has some decent uh, country sounding background tracks, though they aren't that noticeable or memorable while playing the game. However, there are some copyright music tracks taken from the film and reused for this that are quite memorable. For one, that stupid white right arm bells that plays on the m main menu is stuck in my head and I hate it. A catchy tune of stupid hippie lyrics of giving guns to bales, have them hunt the hunters, and give up the second amendment rights. A perfect song made for the open season film, but I still hate the song lyrics in general. Then there's the uh oh song that plays about twice, once at the 7-Eleven and another on the Outhouse Riverwide. Uh, I don't know, they could have done a bit of a better job with the soundtrack. And maybe add some more foresty license music like All the Way Home by Thought Matinee. Just have a listen for yourselves. All through the winter, driving out in your car. <sighs> now this is a good song choice. Two young boys, nine and ten. On second thought, I don't like where this is going. Moving forward. In order to keep you entertained post finishing the game, Open Season the video game asks of you to collect badges when all I want to do is collect badges. Anyway, these badges unlock real life camping tips and ammo facts. I care about this. Why? I have the Yahoo! Me need no Yahoo of a game tell me facts, unless of course you don't have the internet, but I'm sure you would prefer checking out a book from the library. Right? Or maybe not. Hmm. Anyone here listen to Kevin Gilbert? Whew. You saw it too, right? It's not just me and my reoccurring nightmares from living in a Camden, New Jersey apartment, right? I better get out my shank for this one, boys. Ooh, it's real! The glass of my laptop mono is real! But that thing doing a jig on screen? I don't know what the hell that is! But hey, let's take a short break from open season, kick back, relax, drink some of whatever the hell that is floating in your cup. Is that, is that Quaaludes floating around in your drink? Well, I ain't judging, so bottoms up as I discuss a film I found in my cat's basement last Tuesday. It's Adventures of Cinderella's Daughter. Flippin' fantastic. I own a ton of movies no one has ever heard of or cared about. So this might become a reoccurring thing within my vegan reviews. At first this was a completely random choice of film to talk about, but one week after writing the script, the immortal Stan Lee actually died. So now this short review sort of makes sense, cause believe it or not, Stan Lee has a cameo in his garbage film. Why? No one knows, but it's probably because Stan Lee always said his comics were like fairy tales, and I guess he loved fairy tales so much he never turns down a role to be in one. We do. Then by the power vested in me, I now pronounce you man and wife, Excelsior! 
It was also in FEMA Princess Diarrhea with Anne Hathaway, though that cameo role isn't as obscure. Cause no one on YouTube has yet to talk about this low budget year 2000 film. So let's summarize the story then. The story of Cinderella's daughter is about her trying to get laid in a similar fashion to her mother except she's a wealthy woman with a god brother who helps her look like a peasant for the village dance to attract the attention of a lower class male named Gavin. Maybe this will be my chance to get to know some of them, especially that renaissance hunk, Gavin. God, I look ridiculous. <laughs> I gotta marry. Guys, you gotta get married in your early 30s. Get a ring on it, and then you can do all the balding and fatting you want because she's legally bound to find you attractive. But anyway, um, and I hate these pants. So yeah, this film goes through some gimmicks here and there to try to get old Gavin over here to know Cindy Jr. She even went to the lengths of not shaving her back for a few days. Which worked in getting Gavin's attention, but it wasn't the kind of attention that Cindy wanted. I'm, I'm on a new diet called Beer Ramadan, where you don't have anything but beer until it's dinner time. And it's working great for me. I highly recommend it. The, the beer gives you empty calories and kills hunger pains. What else is there? Uh, the Wedding Warlock is my favorite. It's got all the charisma of a used car salesman mixed with the manipulative nature of a loyal. He is also unbeatable in slap chess, i.e. the game of chess where you just glide your arm across the board before anyone notices, and then claim your victory. It's got the mark there, isn't it? Ah, look at that. <laughs> oh my. Something is not right. Also this new Foundland guy who bears a phony name, though 100% genuine with that name, yeah. New Foundland is a, apparently a real place in the... the fictional land of the Cinderella medieval times thing, well, it takes place in the past, but somehow they got mystical pals and stuff, and they got cell phones and whatnot. I mean, that's another thing, they predicted the future, because this movie came out like 2001 or 2002, and uh, somehow they have uh, smartphones, uh, phones with touchscreens, and you can uh, take live feed with them, and yeah, you, know, you can shower people with uh, video feed and stuff, so uh, yeah, this predicted the future somehow. I, I don't know how. I guess it's kind of predictable that, you know, you would, you would have that kind of technology for a phone. But, uh, uh, yeah. Interesting. Very interesting. Not really. No. But anyway, this new Fairland guy kind of reminds me of Gavin Gilbert. Dimitri, this is Gavin. Gavin, this is... Dimitri, Prince of Newfound Place. Cindy, you did say you would go to the ball with me, not some cheap imitation. I never said that. Here you go, I'll be and give it a bash on this, will you? No, man, look, when you... I'll call you right back. The kiddies are teething. Let's get an objective opinion, okay? Uh, fine, fine. Paula! Paula! Hey, which way did you like the song better? Before or after he put all the bull... God, I don't want to get mixed up in this. R.I.P. Kevin Gilbert, the greatest singer and songwriter no one knew existed. Oh, and that Stan Lee fella died too, but he died more recently than uh, Kevin who died back in 1996. So yeah, that Stan Lee cameo. It's probably his most underrated cameo considering he got to say Excelsior in medieval times while wearing a medieval costume. Fits right in, and to be honest, Stan Lee really does uh, blend into this role as a priest. You won't even notice him unless you already know he has a cameo somewhere here. Which they already gave away in the credits, by the way. There's like opening credits where they say Stan Lee guest stars in this, so that's always fantastic. And also, why on the, uh, why on the topic of, uh, dead, uh, celebrities and stuff? Well, this is kinda not dead dead, but, uh, my favorite YouTube channel died. <laughs> it's, uh, Find a Chili Cheese Dogs. They didn't actually die, no one died, but uh, they stopped doing uh, videos and stuff. They they pretty much got away with the whole entire channel and stuff. My favorite YouTubers on the uh, platform. Uh, I love watching their content, I wish they made more videos and uh... They also make Cape Cod kettle chips, which are delicious! Those are garbage! Yeah, I, I believe they left YouTube by, you know, because uh... A, the group uh, decided to uh, abandon themselves, they got tired of working together and they wanted to get more professional jobs and stuff. I mean, they only had like 20,000 subscribers, so they weren't actually uh, going anywhere with that, so uh... We didn't mention this earlier because it's a liability, but when you come here, you have to make your own pizza. 
There's nobody that works here. It's just me. Throw a little dirt on it, whatever you want, I don't care. Sign the you can't sue me release form. Yeah, and also because uh, they're probably annoyed because a lot of people have been asking them, uh, Hey, can you make more uh, Spongebob commercial videos and stuff? Make more Spongebob videos, type, 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 type. And they didn't want to do that. They just wanted to do a bunch of, uh, uh, funny uh, sketch videos, and Spongebob was just one of them, but they had so much more content, and my favorite uh, one of the videos was the Monopoly one. Income tax! Did you make any big purchases last year? Well, I bought a horse! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I recommend you look at, uh, Fried Chili Cheese Dogs, uh, even though the channel has been, uh, deleted pretty much, uh, you can still find some of the most popular videos online somewhere on YouTube, so, uh, I recommend you look at the uh, YouTube channel. So RIP uh, Fried Chili Cheese Dogs 2, because, uh, yeah, even though no one died there, uh, the channel's dead, and it's my favorite YouTube also, and it sucks, but, uh, yeah, it's fantastic. So uh, overall, I'd say this film is a decent 5 out of 10 TV movie that you'll find the most enjoyment out of if you break down and nitpick every single individual scene. So yeah, basically if you enjoy like uh, making fun of uh, like the, the bottom of the barrel type of comedies and stuff, you like The Room. Uh, this is kind of like The Room, except for it's winking at the camera because it knows it's not professionalism and just like, hey, screw it, we want to make a bunch of jokes, we want to break the fourth wall a couple times. So, yeah. Uh, this movie is an inside joke, basically. It, it's like a tax, it's like a tax write-off or something like that. But, uh, hey, it's fun to make fun of, and I think they're making fun of themselves with this, uh, movie, so, uh, I think there's actually another one of these, uh, films. I think it was for, like, Snow White or something. So, uh, uh, yeah, after Cinema Zone, maybe I'll look at the, uh, S the Snow White one. Because there's a Snow White uh, version of this. It's either Snow White or Sleeping Beauty or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I never saw that one. I, I saw this one because my sister owned this when she was a kid. And I saw it too. Because, you know, I'm in the same room. There's only one TV in my home at the time. So, uh, yeah. Uh, phew, I had to watch this with my sister when I was a kid. So... Kind of like Vietnam flashbacks for me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, and uh, now about that to be continued leisure debate thing I mentioned during the uh, open season debate video I released a while back. Yeah, uh, funny story. I lost the footage from the uh, Cinderella's Daughter debate with a uh, brand of Look at My Snit. But uh, Jesse waits and got something even better. Are you okay? Okay. Hide up in the treehouse. I don't know this strangely dressed fellow who I ran into, but he's offering me a place to hide and I'm taking it. Well, Seymour, I made it, despite your directions. Ah, Superintendent Chalmers, welcome. I hope you're prepared for an unforgettable luncheon. Yeah. Oh, ye gods! My roast is ruined! But what if I were to purchase fast food and disguise it as my own cooking? Ho 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 ho! Delightfully devilish, Seymour. I... Superintendent, I was just uh, stretching my calves on the windowsill. Isometric exercise. Care to join me? Why is there smoke coming out of your oven, Seymour? Uh, oh, that isn't smoke. It's steam. Steam from the steamed clams we're having. Mmm, steamed clams. Ooh. Superintendent, I hope you're ready for mouth-watering hamburgers. I thought we were having steamed clams. No, no, I said steamed ham. That's what I call hamburgers. You call hamburgers steamed hams? Yes. It's a regional dialect. Uh, uh, what region? Uh, upstate New York. Really? Well, I'm from Utica, and I've never heard anyone use the phrase steamed hams. Oh, not in Utica. No, it's an Albany expression. I see. You know, these hamburgers are quite similar to the ones they have at Krusty Burger. <laughs> oh, no. Patented Skinner Burgers. Old family recipe. For steamed hams. Yes. Yes, and you call them steamed hams, despite the fact they are obviously grilled. 
you know, the one thing I should... Excuse me for one second. Of course. Oh, well, that was wonderful. Good time was had by all. I'm pooped. Yes, I should be. Good Lord, what is happening in there? Aurora Borealis? Uh, Aurora Borealis. At this time of year, at this time of day, in this part of the country, localized entirely within your kitchen. Yes. Yes? No. Seymour, the house is on fire! No, Mother, it's just the Northern Lights. Well, Seymour, you are an odd fellow, but I must say, you steam a good ham. Graphics-wise, uh, open season looks pretty dang close to the movie, which is a rare feat for most of these licensed PS2 games a week. Just like Ice Age 2, the meltdown, or flushed away. Ice Age 2, by the way, looks like an only PS3 game, or at least in my opinion. So yeah, open season has pretty nice graphics. Not the, not the best, not the most realistic, but it's on par with the movie as much as you possibly can for a PS2 game at least, but uh, yeah, looks nice. Passable. Well, because there ain't much platforming in this game aside from the few times to get to play as Elliot, I won't be able to judge this game as a 3D platform. Instead, I'm going to have to introduce a new category to this, and don't laugh. This ain't me as the kids say memeing, like with the uh, Trek is Love, Trek is Life craze, but I'm going to have to place open season in the cinematic category of gaming. Meaning, I'm comparing open season for the PS2 with games like Uncharted, the Tomb Raider reboot, and The Last of Us, in which the story is more porn, but the gameplay is there to help immerse you into the story. My reasoning for this is because open season the video game pretty much follows the movie beat for beat. It includes details such as in-game cutscenes in which you see the world through Boog's eyes in first person view, making minute gameplay decisions that only halt gameplay progress if answered wrong by nodding for yes and shaking for no using the right analog stick. There are also in-game scene transitions such as when Boog got shot by a tranquilizer dot outside of the 7-Eleven because the cops here were clearly racist against grizzly bears. Or how about that scene transition with the outhouse floating down the river? Then there's also the porcupine butt incidents that occur and function similar to the Lord Croft taking out the little splinter in the Tomb Raider reboot series. Also just take a look at Boog's walking slash turning animation. It's pretty much on par with any other cinematic experience game. Whew, that made me jump just then. What the hell is that in the corner of the room? Is that... Is that... Uh, quick, turn the camera around for me. Was that midget version of Matthew McConaughey just still staring at me for this entire review? I mean, come on! Matthew McConaughey has nothing to do with open season or Cinderella's dog whatsoever. Just go home already! And believe me, folks, this wasn't the first time I had a midget Matthew McConaughey infestation. There was probably 12 or more hiding out in the living room looking for my copy of Fool's Gold. But, uh, between you and me... They ain't never gonna find it. I, I lost that DVD years ago. They're just running a fool's errand at this point. With all that said, that does not make this game any better, and in fact makes the judging of this game far more harsh. But I'm gonna have to give Open Season on PS2 a 4 out of 10 for the cinematic genre of gaming. If you enjoyed the movie, you would like this game just fine. However, for most people, the gameplay experience is nothing special, nor is the story any comedic genius or at least a bit entertaining to some capacity. And once you beat the game, which will only take about an hour and a half by the way, you will never feel the need to later pick this game up back up and play it again. I gave it a 4 instead of a 5 out of 10 since there were a few mechanical issues I had with this game. Elliot and his uh, chainsaw missions are imprecise when it comes down to cutting logs, people, or fences, so you have no clue if you're actually cutting an object until it finally decides to break apart. Also, enemies can be instantly killed or thrown out of bounds. It's a terrible mechanic that only allows for the player to speed through the gameplay, instead of enjoying every minute of the game like you are supposed to in cinematic games. I mean, just imagine. If in Uncharted, you can just one-hit punch enemies as Drake at the start of the game, and easily jog through bullets, no cheat codes necessary. That breaks the whole entire experience of the game, for me at least. So anyways, that wraps up the review of Open Season on the PS2. 
and other home consoles I guess. If you enjoyed this review, then feel free to check out my other reviews on March of the Penguins for the DS, Attack of the Toybots for the Wii, and Crash for Xanny on the PS2. If the other review of mine that does not have my now iconic thumbnail quality is complete and other garbage, so don't bother watching those other reviews of mine. Also, for those wondering, that X-Men 2 on Sage Genesis review, though part of my new line of reviews, is actually completely improvised and has very little editing involved. So it's not as well made as my other new reviews, and I only made it since Brandon of Looked My Snit asked for the review with money on Patreon. But I had little free time to make it since I was also animating for Project Moonship around the same time. He understands too, so I didn't scam him out of $10, plus I didn't take the $10, uh, Patreon gave it back to him because I didn't feel like setting up a Patreon account. I, I made a Patreon account, but then I decided not to put my banking info in it, and I decided, you know what, screw it, I don't need a Patreon, but he still put the money in anyways. And I, know, I had no clue how to give him a refund because I didn't feel like using Patreon. So long story short, I have a Patreon, but I didn't feel like using my Patreon, but Brandon found out about, about my Patreon and he gave me 10 bucks. And I, I couldn't give him a refund, so I still made the view, review anyways, just in case if uh, Patreon didn't give him his money back. And uh, eventually, uh, Patreon did give him his money back, so that's what happened. <laughs> that's basically what happened. So uh, uh, don't give me money on Patreon, anyone. I do not have a Patreon, I gave up on Patreon. I don't want a Patreon account. I, I make enough money with my actual job, and uh, I do make enough money too for my hobby with my monetization. I don't need Patreon money. I don't need it. I got a job. I don't need it. I love my job. I do uh, graphic design work. I do illustration work for like local uh, t-shirt shops and stuff like that. Nothing fancy, but it pays the bills, and it's fun. I like it. So uh, don't give me money on Patreon, I, it does not go to me, it just goes back to you eventually, like 4 months or so. Depends when other Patreon feels like giving you money back, but... Might as well also mention now that we also made a Leisure Debate video on Open Seas in the video game not too long ago. That you can check out now through the link in the description below. So yeah, I gave Open Season on the PS2 a 4 out of 10 for the cinematic genre of video games, and I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time when I review either The Grim Avengers of Billy Mandy for the PS2, uh, Sean Evolution on the DS, The Yellow Avenger for the DS, or Ratatouille for the uh, DS. Man, I got a lot of DS reviews coming up soon.